tourism destination for since it opened in the early 80s. Yes. And have followed many tour operators, both in U.S., here in Europe. Uh, frankly, many of them kind of dropped out or became quiet. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, when the Wu tours, yes. grew strength by strength. Yes. Now, it has to be more than just marketing and pretty yeah. brochures. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about what is the company, yeah. what is the product, what, what is attracting, what gave it this following and growth? Yeah. Sure. So, for those that don't know uh, Wendy Wu Tours, uh, Wendy Wu um, is originally from Tibet, uh, moved to Shanghai, uh, did her um, uh, degree and then went to Australia. And while she was in Australia, um, she met up with a, uh, a local gentleman and they were going to go to back to China for the holiday. Um, he got promoted and he said to her, look, I'm going to stay here. Um, and she said, that's okay, but in true Wendy Wu style, she said, well, I'm going to use your ticket. So what she did is she put an advert in the paper and uh, saying, look, um, I speak Mandarin fluently. If you want to travel to China with me, I'll be your guide for free. That was 23 years ago, and uh, she was amazed by how many people uh, came across to her wanting to travel to China. So she then went to China, she met up with uh, a gentleman called Fang, who now runs our business in China. We own our own ground handling agents in China. And within five years in Australia, became the biggest fully escorted tour operator to uh, China. Um, came to the UK about 12 years ago, and now we're the biggest fully escorted tour operator to China and Japan from the UK, uh, from Australia, and from New Zealand as well. So the business has grown. Um, it hasn't happened overnight, as you know. Uh, Wendy is an excellent uh, tour operator. She's still very, very involved in the business, based in our offices in uh, London Bridge, but travels regularly to Australia. Uh, we rely a lot on our uh, travel agent friends who support us. We've continued to grow our business development team uh, here and in Australia as well to work very closely with uh, our agent partners. Anything pe peculiar, particular, unique about the tour product? Yes, so um, 80, probably about 80% of what we sell is fully inclusive. So we tend to operate in countries where it's very hard uh, for our mutual customers to do things themselves. So for example, in China, hardly anybody speaks English. So what we provide is a handheld service. You arrive at the airport, uh, an international guide um, uh, uh, picks you up and looks after you from start to finish. And also, because China is such a vast country, for example, when you're traveling uh, on a plane between certain cities, our guide uh, checks you in and is also on the same flight as you. So uh, the guide is with you for the whole duration of your stay, uh, day and night. They stay in the same hotel that you stay in as well. Um, and we also give you a national guide. And the national guide, of course, you've traveled so far to the other side of the world, you want someone who's an expert on uh, Tiananmen Square, on the Great Wall, uh, on the Terracotta Warriors. So, um, so that's China. And, uh, you know, as I say, we do China very well, uh, exceptionally well. Our guides are what we, are the key difference uh, in terms of, uh, in comparison to someone else, in terms of our unique selling point. Um, the first thing they say to our customers is that uh, you are my family and I will look after you from start to finish. And since it's inclusive, yes. they're not there to sell you options. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. So, you know, there's no, you know, all the, uh, everything's included from the very start. So your international flights, your domestic flying, all your guiding, and uh, we know sometimes, uh, um, um, uh, you know, sort of a queuing up uh, in China because of the size of the population and the Chinese market is growing and the Chinese want to see their own country. So in, in certain areas, for example, like Jujago, you get 5 million visitors a year. You don't want to turn up and queue up for a day and a half to get a ticket. Your guide would have already organized your uh, tickets for you. All your meals are included as well. If there's something that you don't like, then the guide gets involved immediately to uh, change the menu accordingly. Japan is also all inclusive? Yes, so, uh, you know, when we kind of started talking about other destinations like Southeast Asia, uh, Japan, for example, as well, you know, Wendy was very keen that the principles that have made us a huge success in China are carried across to other destinations. So, in Japan, we've got an international guide that stays with you for the whole duration, and it's exactly the same. You know, our, our 
average size uh, in the group, for example, is um, maximum 28, average 25, 26. And our customers will travel from the UK, from the Australia market, and uh, from uh, New Zealand as well, yeah. Now, in <coughs> Sorry. Japan, yeah. the food for lunch, dinner, yeah. how often is it? at the hotel versus local restaurants? Yeah, it's mostly in uh, local restaurants. I mean, I've just returned from Japan a couple weeks ago. I uh, managed to get out before the typhoon. <laughs> um, uh, fortunately, just about. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, country, um, a wonderful destination. Very different from any other uh, destination, but the food is is kind of, um, is, is local Japanese. You've got those immersive, uh, you know, um, experiences. So in May and September, for example, we get you to see sumo wrestling. You've got tea ceremonies. Uh, you know, you see the geishas. So uh, it's a truly immersive uh, tour. We've got a, a tour called Japan Uncovered, which is our most popular tour. And uh, that covers uh, most of what you need to see in Japan if your plan is only to visit once uh, for the first time. Yeah. Anything new planned for next year? Yeah, so we've got some exciting tours. Uh, we have six tours to Latin America. So we started uh, testing the waters with Latin America uh, about two or three years ago with our direct uh, customers, first and foremost. Um, and, um, you know, a customer said to us, look, I've traveled to China, I've been to Japan, I've been to Southeast Asia with you, I now want to go to another part of the world, what can you do for us? So we put um, a tour called Ultimate South America, and, uh, you know, we put on the market, it's sold, we put another tour, it's sold, another tour, it's sold. So now we've developed six stores in South America, which is selling well. Um, TaylorMade is also growing, you know, whereby customers want a bespoke tour, so we can do that for them as well. And one of the most exciting pieces of news is that we have uh, launched our new ship on the Victoria Mekong. So our ship, uh, which um, is on the water, the maiden voyage is on the 11th of December. Where is it? It's on the Victoria Mekong in Vietnam. Right. Um, and, uh, and sails between Vietnam and Cambodia. And the uniqueness about the ship is uh, probably three or threefold. Firstly, it sails from a quieter part of the Mekong called Kanto, as opposed to Mai Tho, where most of the ships sail. Um, it's a 35 cabin, four star deluxe ship um, with balconies and private facilities. The average cabin size is 25 meters squared in comparison to 16 meters squared on a normal river cruise. And now we've got two VIP cabins at the back. Uh, it's an inclusive tour and it's one of the cleanest, if not the cleanest, ships on the Mekong. So no use of plastic. Uh, the water, for example, is before it goes back into the river, it's almost, you know, um, good enough to drink. I wouldn't recommend it, but it, it cleanses the water before it goes back in. Um, the ship sails at a particular cruising speed, uh, which makes it eco-friendly. Um, and as I say, because it sells on a quieter part of the Mekong, then what you're having is more immersive experiences when you stop uh, on and do the excursions. So the cruise itself is five days, four nights between Vietnam and Cambodia, and then downstream a bit quicker, uh, four days, three nights sailing between Cambodia and Vietnam. So you can charter the whole ship. A lot of you know we've got customers that are chartering the whole ship, uh, different groups, you know, bridge groups, for example. Um, or else we've got a uh, six uh, tours that we've put together surrounding the uh, Victoria Mekong as well. So, you know, oh, people, great. yeah, the difference um, in, uh, in cruising, uh, river cruising, European river cruising and Asian river cruising, generally when you go on a, a river cruise, you know, you're on the ship for a much longer duration. In Asia, you tend to be uh, on the ship for um, a shorter duration, but you experience the country and you tend to see it from land and, and water as well.